All right, we want to take a look at a goal for an investment of like $100,000 20 years from a, a given date. And what we're going to do is set up a, a, an annuity type account where the uh, person's going to make a fixed payment every month uh, for the next 20 years. And the account that they set up has an annual interest rate of 4.5% compounded monthly. And so they, what they want to do is they want to make a uh, fixed payment at the end of it each month. So now, what does that fixed payment have to be in order to yield $100,000 20 years from now in that type of account? So not only are the payments are going to be added up over the, the lifetime of the strategy, but then each of those payments are going to earn uh, some interest. And since they're being made on different months, they're all going to earn a little bit different amounts of interest over that time period. So when we're dealing with an annuity type question like here and we're making the payments at the end of that compounding period, what we know is that we can use um, the future value for uh, an annuity uh, problem to solve for this. And so we're going to use this formula, uh, A equals to uh, P times the quantity, uh, 1 plus R over N to the NT, minus 1 all over the quantity R over N. And R over N is just that interest uh, rate per compounding period, and N times T is the number of compounding periods we're counting. So in our situation, what we have is that we want to uh, find the value of P that will give me that A equals to 100,000. And we know what R is from the account, we know what N is from the compounding periods, and we know what T is because we're looking at a 20-year process. And so what I have here is that my goal was a $100,000, so that was A, equals to P times this quantity, 1 plus R, and up above we said R is 4.5%, so 0 0.045 over n, so we're doing this monthly, so n is 12. And now this term here, n times t, is the number of compounding periods, n, times the number of years. So this whole expression, 1 plus 0 0.05 over 5, uh, 0.045 over 12, raised to the 12 times 20 minus 1, all divided by r over n, so 0 0.045 over 12. Now I'm going to do a few things here uh, that you're noticing is I'm putting all these parentheses in place because I'm going to have to make sure they're they're uh, at that location when I put them into my calculator. But first uh, just the algebra we want to solve for P so if I can find what this answer is I'm going to divide that into a hundred thousand so I'm just going to bring that over to the left hand side by dividing a hundred thousand by that expression and if you want you can simplify that complex fraction a little bit more but I'm gonna kinda of leave it alone and say well this is a hundred thousand divided by that number and so I have one plus that point zero four five over twelve to the power twelve times twenty minus one and this whole term is divided by point zero four five over twelve and because we're gonna need this in the calculator I'm going to put another parenthesis around there, and this, when evaluated, is going to tell me those fixed payments. So now to put it into um, just kind of a, a standard calculator. So we have a hundred thousand divided by. So I'm starting my first set of parentheses for this fraction that's in the denominator. Now the second set of the parentheses is going to be the numerator, so I need that entire numerator in brackets, so I added a bracket, and then the next bracket is for the base that's being raised to a power, so this is the uh, 1 plus 0 0.045 divided by 12, so I'm closing the base in parentheses, and now I'm raising it to the, in parentheses, 12 times 20. So I closed my uh, exponent here. Now I'm going to subtract 1. So 
So now I've closed my numerator with that parenthesis. So now I need to divide, and in the denominator, another parenthesis for this fraction. It has to be the 0 .045 divided by 12. So the denominator is now closed, and now I have to close the green one, the entire denominator of that complex fraction. And what we get is an answer of 257.65. It, one of the things when we look at this, we go, okay, we have a result. Doesn't seem reasonable. Um, if I deposit $257 every month for the next 20 years, uh, it's going to be earning interest at that 4.5%. I know if I add up all those uh, deposits, and if I get over 100000 then you know something seems fishy because then it doesn't include the interest. So I'm just going to do a quick check on my answer here say, well, what's um, the total sum of just the deposits without the interest? Well, 257.65, that's being done every month, so for 12 months, and then that's for 20 years. 61,836. That seems kind of reasonable because I know each one of these is going to be earning interest. For instance, the first payment is going to be earning interest for almost 20 years. And if we just look at just the first month, how much interest that would be uh, earned, you would see that you get um, more than twice the value here. But not every payment is going to get more than twice the value in interest because eventually uh, they have less and less time to, to earn that interest as that payment's made more into the future. So if you want, you can reuse the annuity formula just to make sure you didn't make errors in the parentheses and check our work. Um, and so in my check I'm going to use P equal to that 257.65 and evaluate to see what the future value is. So if I put 257.65 and because I rounded I expect a little bit of rounding error here times 1 plus uh, the R over N to the NT, so that's 12 times 20, minus 1, all over 0 0.045 over 12, and into the calculator we go, that is not the calculator, there's our calculator, so 257 times now in parentheses for this part, and then I need a parentheses for this part. The base here, 1 plus 0 0.045 divided by 12. Oops. At 1 plus, I don't think the plus got in there, so I'm starting over here. 257.65 times the big bracket, and now the base. 1 plus 0 0.045 divided by 12 to the power, and in parentheses, 12 times 20. Closing the exponent, subtract 1. Closing the numerator, so now I have to divide by this fraction, and make sure you put that fraction in parentheses here, 0 0.045 divided by 12. And it, look at the result here, we have 100,000 as that future value of the annuity. And because we rounded this, um, and I don't have the information anymore, but we rounded it slightly up, we got a little bit more than 100,000 in there, but just by a fractions of, of pennies um, when I rounded, gave me an extra 24 cents from the calculation. So it does look like my answer checked out. Uh, when you're doing these problems, a big thing is making sure you have all those parentheses in place for the uh, type of calculator you're going to be using.